Good evening, everybody. How is you going? Uh, my name's Dr. Weez. I'm a South African overclocker, and tonight we're going to play Rookie Rumble. So, the purpose of the, the stream tonight is really just to go through um, ways you can and how to bench XTU and how you can improve in some XTU scores, some some basic uh, some basic uh, what's it, tweaks and whatnot, and then. Uh, from there, we'll have a look at the next stage of um, the Ricky Rumble, which is um, uh, that horrible benchmark that I don't really like. Uh, it's, uh, let me just pull it up. Sorry, I've had a blank. That's GPU Park, if I'm not mistaken, 100M. Uh, and then there's also HW by Prime. So um, the plan was tonight to, to use my... Uh, Asus Maximus 8 Impact with a variety of different memories and I had done some homework and put some profiles together and unfortunately sometime between putting the profiles together and setting up for tonight's bench I uh, over tightened either the water cooler or over tightened the uh, um, the uh, CPU pot last time I benched and unfortunately I've got a a whole array of uh, uh, bent pins on my impact, so that's out of out of order. So what I'm going to have to use tonight is my only other retail board, which is the um, ASRock Z170 OC formula. Uh, the whole purpose of the Rookie Rumble stream tonight is to um, to show you guys on retail hardware that you can buy yourselves and how to get some decent scores up there. So. The powerhouse tonight is delivered once again by my favorite Cooler Master V1200 Platinum. I am running an all-in-one cooler from Cooler Master as well, which is the 240 uh, uh, Nepton. And then on the um, motherboard side, obviously I've just said I'm running the V170 OC formula, and I'm running a retail set of uh, HyperX Furies, a 2666 15 1.2 volt um, rating. So if we just open up, um, I'll switch quickly to the screen. Uh, it's not working yet. Sorry, let me just get that up and running. Sorry, that uh, motherboard dying on me sort of uh, put me in my back foot. So let's just have a look here. Okay, and get the LPL capture. All right, so... Uh, and let's just change that resolution quickly so that it's a little bit better. Okay, I just need to reset a few things after the last stream. It was uh, a bit out of whack. Okay, and of course now because of the bent pins, I need to just change a few things here. One second, sorry. Uh, the 170 AC formula. Okay, so I'm still using Intel Core i7 6700K, and I'm not using the EDAR memory. And let's just go and put here it is HyperX Terry Black 266. Uh, megahertz. Okay, right. So sorry, that's that's a little bit of the admin out of the way. That needed to just be done. Okay, and right. So. I have got the chat window open. Guys, please don't feel shy. Ask questions as I go along. This is the first time I'm benching this motherboard on air with this memory combination. So um, I might need to run off and just go get my notes quickly. But uh, it should be all right. shouldn't be too bad. First thing we're going to do is just, just have a look at what we've got running here. So... Right, so we've got the 6700K. You can see everything's still on speed step. Memory is still at stock, and um, nothing is really overclocked at all. So 
the very first tip I'm going to give you is the very first thing you need to do before doing any sort of overclocking ever is making sure that your system is stable before you start overclocking. Now, it's a mistake that we've all made many times before. We get set up, we start cooling down with liquid nitrogen, or we start overclocking, but we actually don't know if the system is stable. So what ends up happening when we do run into issues, then it's a frantic trying to, uh, you know, rush trying to figure out what, what's going on. Meanwhile, it could have been something that happened before you started overclocking, which is throwing the whole system out of whack. So I'm actually going to start keeping some notes as well. Um, no, the, the radiator... Sorry, uh, a question was asked if I'm benching radless, and no, the question, I've got a, a 240 uh, radiator to share with 240 fans on it. I uh, will make the stream bigger, so we can just have a look at that. So while that's running, uh, let's have a look there. So there you can see the, 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 the Nepton 240, and on this side here, I've got uh, 240 more fans. So let's just try and get some of these things into frame a bit, so that you can see I'm using the B1200 Platinum with the Cooler Master All-in-One. Okay, so we have now finished the we've now finished the benchmark, and we have got a base score. So what I want to do is. I just want to create a little text document here, and we're going to call this Dr. Weezer's um, uh, let's go to Dr. Weezer's helpful tips. So, number one, always test before you start. Okay, and as we go, and as I add to this. I'm going to just keep making notes there because I want to do a, a written version of this for you guys as well. So let's have a look quickly and our target is around 1670. So to do that, there's a few things that we need to do and XT is very biased towards CPU clocks and towards memory clocks. And that's where we've, we've got to start looking. So. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to start moving our CPU up, and I want to try and get around to 5 gig, if I can, 5.1 on all in one, which would be quite nice. But it's a lot to ask because with XTU you've got to start managing your temperatures. And then once we've done that, we'll come back to some of the XTU configurations that are also very helpful when overclocking on air. So, in fact, let's go through that first. Okay, so with XTU you get your standard um, GUI sort of light up window, and what you can see on the bottom right hand corner here are some indicators of what's currently happening. Now, when you install XTU, by default, these three options are not enabled. So, that then will only give you a very basic temperature about your memory utilization, your package temperature, your thermal throttling, and your frequencies. Now, XTU is quite a, a, a heavy benchmark, so it, it takes up a lot of power and, and generates a lot of heat. And the thing that will really bring your score down when overclocking at ambient temperatures or above ambient temperatures is your throttling. So by default, you'll see that the thermal throttling is displayed, but that's not the only throttling that XTU would do on air. So you've really got to go and do yourself a favor and enable the power limiting throttling and the current limiting throttling and then the VR throttling. And I'll show you why I do that when when we get to that. So by default, that's what I'd recommend you have enabled. And uh, let's show you why. Okay, so we're just gonna close that. And we're gonna make a quick note. So two would enable uh, XTU details. All right. So I hope no grammar Nazis are spelling Nazis out there because it is short and notes. All right, so let's go ahead and just restart and enter the bias. Oh, uh, you're talking about the VRM um, heat sinks? Okay, yeah, no, sorry. Um, yeah, I, I don't generally use them. I'll keep an eye on them throughout the bench session, but it should be fine. I haven't seen anything on the Z170 that's actually required, even when at ambient temperatures. 
Okay, so this is my first time really pushing this this setup past to 10. I um, mean, you know, uh, 103 be uh, clock. So first thing we're going to do is we're going to go ahead and try and uh, just overclock the CPU a bit. Okay, so we're going to leave multi-core on, CPU ratio uh, per all cores, and we're going to change it to 45. The cache ratio will change to 45 as well, and the minimum will change to 45. So now this is now basically forcing it to a 4.5 overclock. Uh, next thing we do, base clock frequency, leave that alone, step or leave it alone. And I think that's all we need to worry about in here. And then change the voltages. And we're going to take it to fixed mode, and we're going to make it 1.35, say for instance, all right? Leave that at one. And we'll leave everything else at standard. Okay, so today's weather in Johannesburg, South Africa, is uh, not too bad. It's been quite a nice day. We have got a cold front coming in through Cape Town this weekend, so we expect it to get rather chilly, our first cold snap of the of the year. But currently, as of 6 o'clock tonight, it was 15 degrees and 41% humidity. The OC lab is currently 23.8 degrees. All right, okay, so one thing we didn't do is we didn't disable speed step. And let's just go ahead and run XTU again. So I want to make more notes here. Uh, where's my pencil? Okay, so our first score was 1250. And let's just run this. So you can see, even with speed step on, it's now clicking up, and you can see the frequencies are, are running nicely. Okay. So while running, we've got to keep an eye on our package temperature. We've got to keep an eye on our thermal throttling. And we've got to keep an eye on our current and power limit throttling. We've got to find the happy medium between temperature and megahertz and voltage. The more voltage I give it, the further I can clock it, the more heat it generates. Okay. The packet. Did I make MaxBem boot? I'm not sure of the, uh, the question. Okay, so let's try 1.4. And we were up to 48. Um, maximum memory. I haven't clocked the memory yet, Dr. Gregor, if that's what you're asking. Um, We'll get onto the memory once you find the maximum CPU clock. Okay. Uh, just so you, if you want to see what I've got going. At the moment, it is really just overclocked the CPU, which uh, speed step isn't on, uh, isn't off yet. And then the memory is just straight up uh, on stock to whatever the BIOS sets. So, a little trick on XTU, more megahertz is better than more memory. So, getting 50 megahertz more on the CPU clock will be better than getting 50 megahertz on the memory clock. But memory clock does play a massive role in getting a good score. Uh, so, if we have a look at what the score is going to be now, we're currently at, at 48 multiplier and it's giving us a 4.83 on the core frequency. Now our memory is sitting at stock, so our memory clock's really terrible, and you'll see that coming through in our score now, 
where we'll be just over 1,300 probably. But the, um, the other competitors at the same sort of clocks are sitting up around four, uh, 1,600 already. So you can see there's 300 points to be gained just on the memory clocks. And we're going to jump straight into that as soon as we hit the maximum clock on, on the CPU. Oh, so the other thing that I haven't done yet is I haven't turned the fans on to max. So they're still just on, on the auto like Q fan setting. Okay, so at 4.8, we got 1.314. Okay, so let's try our luck. Now, if this actually does run, I'll be very impressed. And this has got to be one of my best CPUs ever. And the CPU I'm using tonight was my uh, prize, or the, it was a CPU that I won at um, the HWBot World Tour event in Cape Town. Uh, it's very kind of them to give away nice CPUs. Okay, so there we, we, we ran 4.9, and you can have a look on the screen. If you have a look at the core frequency that XTU is reporting, you'll see that it didn't jump all the way up yet, and then it, it crashed out. So that basically means that when XTU put it under full load, the CPU just bugged out, and it, it didn't have enough juice to run that frequency. Um, so the question has been asked as to what CPU I'm using by a guy using uh, Droid Insanity. I'm using the 6700K, uh, the Core i7 uh, CPU, and uh, currently it is clocked to 4.8. And what we're going to try and do is we're going to try and run 4.9 with a little bit more voltage. Um, I hope you were watching. My temperatures were jumping up uh, to the 80s on that last run, so we might be hitting the thermal voltage barrier. And let's just so on a 148. Let's take that back. Okay, and we're going to put a little bit more volts here. And let's have a look. Okay, 4.91, and it looks like it's running, yes, uh, 6700K is correct. Right, so tip number three from Dr. Weeze. Operating system makes a massive difference in the benchmark you run. Not all operating systems are created equally. Not all versions of the same operating system are created equally. So for instance, you have Windows 7, you have Windows 7 Home, you have Windows 7 Enterprise. You have Windows 7 Professional, you have Windows 7 32-bit, you have Windows 7 N32-bit, you have Windows 7 N64-bit, and the list goes on as you can well imagine. Okay, so not all operating systems are made equal, and it pays. Microsoft does allow you to run an operating system for 30 days free trial. It pays to get as many different operating systems as possible, and each time a new benchmark comes out, or each time there's something new, a new memory module or something like that, you need to go through each one, each operating system, to try and find which one might give you that extra, extra little bit. And sometimes a little bit can be quite a lot. So if you've been observant, you'd notice that I'm not running a Windows 7 uh, operating system for XTU, and there's a very good reason for that. That's right, so we passed at 4.9, and what we're going to do next is we're going to try and see if we can get the, the cache up to the same limit with it being stable. So we'll jump up to 4.7, just click Apply and go through it. I don't have any videos on X99 
overclocking and water just yet. There is a new platform coming out in a month or so's time, and I will be bringing you a whole lot of, of uh, videos on that platform as soon as I get my hands on it. Uh, 5 gig is possible in all-in-one? Uh, possibly. I'm starting to hit a few speed wobbles already, so I don't think this chip will get 5 gig. But uh, let's have a look. So basically what happened here is you can see the benchmark didn't report an error. It didn't crash out, but it stopped running. And it doesn't give me the option to rerun the benchmark. So that means I've actually now got to either A, reboot the system, or just kill the XDU service and, and give it another trial. Now, what I'm going to do before I do that is just give it a little bit more um, more voltage. So we'll just go up to 4.6, and then it's starting to hit my comfortable limits for for air. And let's try again. So keeping an eye on the thermal throttling on the power limit throttling and the current limit throttling, you can see I'm not hitting any of those just yet, but my package temperature is peaking around 80 degrees. And that's 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 getting to the, the levels where I start to think it's not really, really safe. I don't like it running anything more than, say, 80, 82 degrees at all. That's just my personal, my, my personal limits that I put onto my own hardware. If it's a live competition, I'll run it at 110 degrees if it's not your hardware. Who cares, as long as it doesn't die. Okay, so this looks like it might be all right. Uh, which volts? Uh, the the core, core volts. Okay. So we are 13, 18, and that's at 4.9 and 4.7. Right, so our cache frequency is at 4.7. 4.9. So you want to try and get your cache frequency up as high as possible. That's the the next thing. Let's see if that runs. And how do I tune the fans? I wonder if I can. Uh, I need to just remember to go into BIOS and set the fans onto full. Something I haven't done yet. Okay. Alright, so the minute I put the cache frequency on 4.9, I get an instant freeze. So that's not gonna, that's not gonna gel. Okay, Dr. Weezer's tip number four: keep notes. So I've got a, a little black book here. And every single benchmark, every time I run, every time I have a session, I try and keep notes. Okay, the reason for that is is because when you find something, when you discover something, or when you hit a roadblock and you can't find uh, a stable setting again, you can always just revert back to your notes, and it should tell you. So, for instance, what I'm recording here is I'm recording my score. I'm recording then the frequency of the, the processor, the frequency of the cache, and the voltage I used. And that way, I always know that when the if the score is increasing or the score is decreasing, then uh, I can I can see at which point it did what. Okay. So let's go ahead and try to push it just a little bit more. And we'll up that to there, 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 and let's just try it. Okay. So that's frozen there. I think this will do. Let's 
just go and change the fan profiles. Oh, that's a hard lock. Okay. Um, for those that are saying there's problems with buffering, I heard that there is a problem with the Twitch server somewhere along the line that's causing issues with a few users. I do apologize. Um, not much I can do about it though. Uh, just bear with it. Hopefully it will come right. Okay, so I need to set the fan profiles. And for the life of me, I don't know where to do it on this board. Um, maybe here. There we go. Okay. And just come here to do. Getting a little bit warm. We will just position some air. Ow. Right, so again, we just changed the settings, test stability, and hopefully after this we can start getting up to some memory. Uh, I don't want to spend too much time on each benchmark. I want to try and get all three in and uh, take it from there. Okay. Blue screen. Let's go and set some of these up. Let's see, let's leave that enabled. difference now we need to just do the RO voltage and change that to 1.4 Yeah, well, let's try that. See, that made a difference. I think the problem is actually temperature. It's not, uh, not settings.
ಬರ್ತೀರ First, I want to try for slightly lower voltage. So I've set 1.5 volts on, on that, and I don't think it's necessary. I think it's I don't think it's voltage. Could be wrong. The thing about overclocking is there's no right and there's no wrong way. It's you've got to feel your way. You've got to find your way. Okay, so my core frequency is not jumping up. It's sitting at 3.93. If you have a look at the bottom here. So I've disabled something on this board that I'm not familiar with that's caused that problem. So let's go and see what I disabled. As I see on the stream now, you've only just seen me hit my finger. That's funny. Uh, why did it go here? So I disabled I disabled um the CPU SPID support. Must have been that maybe. Let's check. Okay, it's still 3.9. Okay, so
Okay, we're back. Okay, so let's just make sure we're stable again. Um, and then we're going to start playing around with some uh, some memory clocks, I think. Okay, so 4.8, 4.8. I'm struggling to get 4.9 really comfortably stable. I think we could do it once we've got some memory clocks on it, but I'm not going to worry too much for now. Let's just move along. I've still got two other benchmarks to do, and we've only got an hour and 20 minutes remaining. The nice thing is once you've figured out what your maximum sort of clock is for the first benchmark, to scale up and down with the other two should be quite easy. So should be quite doable. The problem I have is that with GPU power, it's a relatively new benchmark for me. It should be similar to CPU, I mean to super power, where memory clock, CPU clock should play a role. But I believe from my past experiences there are some things to look at. So let's just hurry up and get done with XTU I think. Ah, so 13, 16, that's four eight four eight. I remember I said take notes. Don't forget so high temperatures eighty two. So I think that's pretty cool. Let's go ahead and restart. So I'm tonight I'm not using my, my impact as I said before when we started. I uh, had some bad luck with that off the last session in between preparing for this and getting set up for this where um I've obviously over tightened somewhere and I've got some a whole row of bent pins and stuff like an indentation it's quite depressing I'm quite disappointed about that but uh, I'll get that sorted out it just needs some time to be done okay so the first thing we can try and do is you can just try and load XTU I mean XMP settings and that should give you quite a nice boost just to start off with straight away but we're not going to do that we're gonna we're gonna go straight into doing something um, a little more exciting, should I say? So we'll start off at uh, three four six six. I think that's quite fair, and we're gonna just cheat and go with the preset. Now on this board as well as the ASUS board, there's a real nice bunch of preset you know settings you can go for. So on the ASRock, from my past experiences, my biggest complaint was that everything is just air super tight. There's no like uh, in between sort of settings. So if your memory doesn't, uh, if your memory is really not up to the task, you're really going to struggle with some of these. So I'm using AFR, which is Hynix ADAR, and there is an ADAR uh, 3466, very tight, 1.7. So we just go ahead and set that, and you'll notice it'll go in and put in your key, your key timings. Now for XTU, and this is a real tip that most people won't give out, there are two timings that are really quite important, or three timings to be precise. There's your T4, which needs to be sort of like as low as possible, okay, TFAW, and then your TWRWRDR and TWRWRDD, uh, DR and DD, these two here. Those two are very important for XTU as well. So if you're watching the stream, there's some real nice information for you. If you're just going to be reading the text, I'm not going to be putting that into my written up dialogue. And you didn't see any of that, so I will redo it. Let me go back into the bias quickly. And just bring the video back. Uh, it's really frustrating when the, the LPR doesn't switch. Sorry, let me go through all that again. Okay, so... What we did is we were having a little DRAM configuration. So what you can do is you can just load the XMP profile. XMP profile on its own will give you a nice little boost in score, but we're going to be more adventurous. So what I did is I went and set the DRAM frequency to 3466, and then I said I was cheating, and I went for the DRAM preset. So on these motherboards, as with the ASUS, you get a whole bank of uh, presets. So the chips I'm using obviously the ADAR, so I'll select the ADAR from the list and 3466 at 1.7. Alright, so what we need to do is just make sure that our voltage is set, 
and it is. The one other voltage that you might need to do, depending on your IMC, is your SA voltage. Now, I see that this motherboard has, by default, even when on auto settings, pumped it up to 1.35 volt. Now, on LN2, that's sort of where I run my SA voltages. On air, it should be fine up to about 1.5, but it's a personal preference, and you can push it up and pull it down as much as you see fit. Right, so let's go ahead and boot and see if this is stable. It should be very easy. These memory sticks can do 3866 uh, with 1.8 volts. Um, they are the best two that I've got out of a set of four. And full retail, I mean, these are not anything special. These are available through any sort of retail channel. And let's go ahead and look at what set here. Right, the 1216. Uh, I was saying that the most important uh, for XTU, you've got to really keep an eye on your T4. That's got to be nice and low. And your TWR, WR, um, DD, and uh, DR. These two here. Okay, so just really make sure that those are nice and set low. The rest of them are all pretty stock standards. You know, nothing really exciting. And then your your RTLs play quite a large role. So let's just go ahead and see if we are actually XTU stable. And let's just go ahead and run. Okay, so what I'm just doing is while it's running, I'm keeping an eye on the package temperature, which is climbing to 91. It's a bit extreme. All right, then I'm looking at the thermal throttling, which is not hitting at the moment. And then the current little throttling is not hitting either. So all those sort of protections have been taken away in the bias. So you really just got to make sure that that temperature is not climbing too high because it's not throttling at all, whereas by normally by this sort of temperature it would be throttling. Um, what I have noticed is my core frequency is down 100 megahertz, so we'll just need to bump up the base clock to get that back. Okay, so 16.79. So moving from moving from 1316 at the same megahertz to 1679 was really as simple as um, going in and just configuring the memory, hitting a, a 3466 megahertz clock and pumping up the, uh, the the timings. And those timings, I didn't set. There's nothing special. I used the profile that was supplied to us by the manufacturer and and just punched run. run. Okay, so if we have a look at what the current score is on the Ricky Rumble for XDU is 1619. So that's 404.75 per core. And if we have a look at what this score is, um, let's just have a look at calculator in the stupid windows. Oh, that's interesting, okay. Huh. Better save that before. Okay, so we're just going to save 1679, save. And while we add it, we'll create a screenshot. No. I think we're not stable. Okay, so that's that's no good. Okay, well let's try for more. I think we can do better. Okay, so yep, you've got a picture. Now what we're going to do is we're just going to increase the DRAM settings a little bit further. So let's try for 3733, 
And again, we're just going to go to use a, a preset, uh, 3733, very tight, and 1.7 volts. So we just hit that, and you'll see that it will automatically have adjusted. Now we're at 12, 18, 8, uh, 18, 18, 28, and it's also pushed the uh, TRFC up to 320. So it's kept the voltage just the same, but it's increased the timing. So let's have a look and see what sort of uh, effect that would have on our score and our stability. like that. Okay, so let's just push it one fleet. Right, and let's just go through the 600 then. Actually, you know what, I'm going to go back to where we were, 3433, and just the voltage slightly. Ah, so we're back into Windows, and we're just going to add a new tip here, tip number four, which is use as a starting point. Right. Oh, blue screen, memory management. Okay. Okay, so there's two things I'm going to change here now. Uh, first being the RO voltage, 1.25. And I want to change the SO voltage, 1.35. Try again. Uh, 1.75. <laughs> Flabbergasted by the info. Very true. If you're not pretty, you can at least be funny. Jeez, okay, so let's not make it
That was a very pretty crash, that one. Alright, so that's the first odd one, fast. Got one score from the board, but not saved. Thus is the nature of overclocking. that have been again. So what you didn't see there in the bias is I just changed the um, change the DDR voltage from 1.75 to 1.68. So my basic fault finding method there was to increase the voltages to see if it made a difference. And when it didn't make a difference, I then decreased the voltages to see if, if it makes a difference. So to try and find the sort of happy medium be in between. So at 1.7, it completed. Um, so like now, it's crashed again. But it's, I think there's something else to do with the CPU um, voltages there. So it's it's really just a case of going up, going down, going up again, or you know just try and find that that uh, the happy medium. Uh, the most frustrating thing with overclocking is when it runs at first time without an issue, and then you can never run it again. It's it's one of the, the things that really gets under my skin, at least. I don't know about you guys, but it happens a lot, especially you know like on with adding two cooling as well. You go find your run, your run, your run. And you'll be just climbing and increasing your scores and building and building and building, and then it just crashes, and then you know you you can't even get to where you were ten scores ago again. It's 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 very frustrating. So that's why you should always, as you run, make a screenshot, run screenshot, run screenshot, and that is going to be my tip number five. And let's see where we are. So what I did is just to try and find out where where my problem is, is I put those two voltages back to auto. So I put the PC as it wasn't PCH, it was IO voltage back to auto, so it's gone back to 1.2. And I put the SA back to auto, which is 1.35, which is exactly where I had it. And we've lost the screen capture. Why does it keep doing this? Sorry guys, let's go sort this thing out again. For some reason lately, after about an hour, hour and a half, it just drops away, then I've got to unplug it, plug it back in again, then it comes back. 
and uh, I'm glad it came back to the stream before this, it didn't come back. It's a bit frustrating. Okay, so let's go and try that. What I also want to try and do is just try and lower that recoil voltage a little bit. I think the problem we might be having is thermal. That package temperature peaking 88 degrees, 90 degrees, 90 degrees. I'd like to see that just a little bit lower. And the only way we can remove uh, temperature is by decreasing the voltage. Okay, so I have got another tip for you, which will be my tip number six, which I have just broken, and that is change one thing at a, a time. Okay, so It also just helps with like the fault finding side of it. So don't go and then change the CPU voltage and the SA voltage at the same time. You go and go and work with the CPU, then work with the memory, and and try and limit the amount of factors that come into your fault finding expedition. Yeah, so I changed two things now. I changed the SA voltage to 1.25 and I change the, the CPU core voltage. And you'll notice that I'm getting to sort of a quarter of the way through, then it's crashing with memory management. So there is a trick to doing this now with XTU that we could take advantage of. And that would be using the slow mode. So after about five seconds, you could switch to slow mode, which would then decrease the memory clock, decrease the CPU clock, and allow the benchmark to continue theoretically past that point. We're doing that, and I wanted to go into the BIOS to try and change some other settings, but since we're back into Windows, let's try that. So, slow mode on this board is add in two mode, slow mode X and P on. Okay, so I think it's the middle one, and what we'll do is we'll start up XTU. Let's go ahead and run the benchmark, and we can hit the slow mode after 5 seconds. So 1, 1,000, 2, 1,000, 3, 1,000, 4, 1,000, 5, 1,000. Okay, so we hit the slow mode. Or is this, uh, I don't think this is the slow mode button. Yeah. That is a slow mode. You'll notice how long it's running for. It's weird that it didn't change these settings here. If we have a look here. Now, the disadvantage to slow mode 
is that it is exactly that, it's slow mode. So it makes your whole PC come to a grinding bloody halt just about. It will finish the benchmark and you will get a full score for it. But sometimes you've got to ask yourself the question, is it worth the bloody wait? Okay, we'll crash all the same. Okay, so let's take slow mode off. Okay. Let's just make sure we have got the right button for slow mode. Uh, power button, reset button, XMP button. It must be slow mode. Allen 2 mode, switch 1. Uh, maybe I hit the Allen 2 mode button, which is why my whole system's broken. I hope I haven't killed something. Uh, it's the first time I'm using this motherboard, so I must ignore my mistakes. Let's try that again. Add in two mode, switch menu one. So I think add in two mode is a black one. Anything there? Okay, so that's slow mode. It is the middle one. Okay, so you can see when I hit the slow mode, it just takes the CPU down to 800 megahertz, and then your Northbridge is down to 800 megahertz as well. So we'll go ahead and just put slow mode off. Okay, 4.8, and let's run XTU. What we want to do is we want to give it five seconds and then hit the slow mode. So, 1 1000, 2 1000, 3 1000, 4 1000, 5 1000. Hit the slow mode. Right, so you'll notice now, check in the bottom right hand corner, we're hitting thermal throttling 100%. Your core frequency is at, 80, uh, at 800 megahertz. Your process of uh, core fre cache frequency is at 800 megahertz. So, what we've essentially done now is we've We've run the benchmark for the first five seconds, which is the amount of time XTU actually takes to calculate the score. And then we've triggered the slow mode to get back to like ridiculously low clocks to get our stability. So where we were crashing out at a quarter of the way through, this should allow us now to run, ride it all the way through. And let's check if we if we write on that. Okay, so Again, the disadvantage of doing this is the ridiculous amount of time it takes to finish compared to if you're running it at full mode. Okay, about half, uh, yeah, about four tenths of the way through. Okay, we're about halfway through now. So in a sort of competition live type environment, you really only want to resort to this type of tactic um, should you be like, absolutely at your limits and it's the last straw. Uh, if you take the World Tour type competition, for example, you really do not have enough time to run XTU at seven minutes a run. You, you've got to, you've got to 
to calculate um, risks and time analysis and, and all that sort of stuff to to maximize the amount of runs you have because essentially once you've completed a run you should be able to bump up the base clock and then bump up the base clock and just build in your score each time. If it's taking this long to run and it still crashes, then uh, yeah, it's not worth the risk. So look, we got three, three quarters of the way through there and we've essentially crashed. So that's like, in a competition environment, that would be, uh, that's like end your campaign. Yes, yeah, so you can forget it. So let's just take slow mode off there and let's spend a little bit of time to try and find our stability again. Okay. So maybe what we need to do is we need to have a look. We're we getting memory management issues. So memory management could be the CPU cache as well. So let's try and dial that one back and see if we can find magic stability there. The other thing it could be is your IMC. So that is your um, SA voltages. Your IO voltages will play a role as well as your memory voltages and memory timings, of course. So no more slow mode. I, th I think we've gone through enough torture on that to, to understand how it works and then to understand the, the pros and cons around it. And uh, I'll add that to the Dr. Weezer's tips for the day. Okay, temperatures of 87, yeah, four tenths of the way through, halfway through, 85, 86, the temperatures are looking four degrees cooler, and I don't want to get too confident, but we're three quarters of the way through, and same issue, and the blue screen is bad, cool header. Okay, so this I think is around memory timings, memory voltages. So let's have a look at the presets. Three, four, six, six, one point seven. Crazy, let's try 1.8. Okay, so we are now an hour and 15 minutes into the competition, and normally, for instance, uh, like the G school competition would give you three hours on the stage to complete three benchmarks. We've already blown almost half of that and we don't even have a score on the board yet. So you can very quickly see how time can run away with you when you start to run into that sort of, sort of snags. And the trick is to try and do some broad diagnostics to narrow down what the problem is or to just dial back, get some scores on the board and then come back and try and push higher again later. Okay, so we're normally crashing around three quarters of the way through. And what I pumped up there was the memory voltage to 1.8, just as a hell Mary to see if that makes a difference. I did put it up earlier to uh, 1.75 and it didn't make a difference. And let's just have a look. It looks like that was the problem. Okay, 1675, so 1679 was our previous best, we just saved that and we crashed again, bugger.
change the 1.325 Right, so straight away after this uh, as soon as I've got a score that I can save, we're going to jump straight on to HW of Prime. And I've got some tips for that one as well. The main one is to make sure you've done your research on the version of Java. There's a de very definite gain on certain versions of, of uh, the JRE runtime. The next thing is back to my not all OSs are, um, are equal. And uh, the third being is that memory does not play a very big role from my past experiences. And uh, not all OSs are made equal. So, HW of Prime. Okay, so that made it worse. And looking back at my notes, that is all I've got for HW of Prime. We've got 10 more minutes in this benchmark and then we have to move on. It's as simple as that. If we do not pass now at this frequency, then I will dial back the memory clock and up the CPU clock. I think the voltage was too high. Now on the ASUS board, I need to play with the PLL termination and the DMR voltage. On this board, I don't know those voltages, and that could also be what's what's uh, giving me a hard time here. It's the DMR voltage. I don't know what, what voltage it is on the ASRock board. It's really embarrassing using a board for the first time on the live stream. Feel like a real rookie. Haha.
Come on, let's save the score and move on. Okay, so 16.62, and let's click save. 16.62, and we're going to put this rookie. All right. So in a nutshell, what I changed there was I uh, basically set much looser timings um, in the bias. So I, I ran the, I used, I just used the 3600 uh, profile, but changed the megahertz down to 3466. Okay, so the timings were straight from profile again. I didn't use anything special that I've done, and I just changed the megahertz down. So now what we can do is we can try and just pump up the um, pump, up, pump up the base clock. So change the reference clock. And I don't know if we can do it in this program. We can do it in this program. I don't know if it works with this uh, reference clock. Okay, I can't. I can change the multiplier. And okay, let's not use XDU. Let's just use four minute drive. And let's try bumping up the base clock and running again. So we'll try 101 to start off with. It's quite a big jump, but I'm running out of time for this benchmark. Okay, so you can see that our core frequency has gone up to 4.84 and the cache frequency 4.75. And if it runs, we should get a slightly better score. So at five gigahertz on the CPU and the core in the cache, uh, with this AFR memory, seventeen oh five, I think, is my best score. But I did need to use liquid nitrogen to to cool the CPU to 5 gigahertz to run stable XTU. The fact that it's running 4.8 XTUs is pretty good. Okay, so 1686, and that is officially our best score it's for the night. 1686, and we're going to call that rookie. All right, so we just save that, and once again we can now save a screenshot. Well, for the first time, we're saving a screenshot. And for competitions, normally you need to upload a screenshot. For XDU, they don't normally require it. But as a force of habit, do yourself a favor and just save the screenshot. If there are any ever questions about your frequency or your megahertz or your settings or whatever the case might be, having a screenshot just gives you something to fall back onto and it would normally um, solve some of your problems. All right, so we just save SPDs and everything, and uh, tip number seven, XTU, use the uh, snipping tool. It comes with Windows 10, and no problems. So 1686, uh, rookie. Save. Okay, so what we do is again, is increase the base clock another point further and uh, try again. Okay, I don't know when I have to go up a full base clock at a time, uh, but you know, I'm doing it. And apply and just run it again. And you basically just keep doing that until the such time you blue screen. And there we go. All right, so that concludes. Um, uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. Um, the replay will be up on YouTube tomorrow. And uh, yeah, thanks for stopping by. Don't forget to subscribe to the channels. Um, all right, so that concludes basically the XTU portion of it. The last thing we need to do when we get back into Windows is obviously save our screenshots and export our profile to upload. And there is a memory a USB here in the front.
Okay, so first thing we're going to need to save. Uh, where's my mouse? Where's the mouse? Okay. So first thing we're going to save is our... Is our screenshot. File Explorer, Kingston, Submit, and we're going to make a Rookie Rumble. Uh, we should actually even call this, change it to uh, number 30. Okay. And from there we need to export the XTU profile. Here we're going to add tip number six, which is we'll do a test upload of your scores. Okay, so the logic behind always do a test upload of your scores is part of some of some of part of the strategy of overclocking competitively at least is not to reveal your best score straight away. Now this act is called sandbagging and it is a tactic that is used by quite a few people, including myself, regrettably, because it's a strategy that can be deployed and the reason why you want to do that is because sometimes giving unless you know your score is like way out there Sometimes giving your opponent a target can uh, motivate them to push for that extra four hours or whatever the case might be. And um, yeah, it's 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 a it's a strange strategy, but it is a strategy nonetheless. What I prefer doing nowadays is benching on the last day of the competition rather than benching uh, way before the time and then having to not tell people scores when I have them because it's the other thing is the overclocking community a lot of guys ask questions do you have this do you have that and I don't like saying no I don't when I actually do so uh, it's a new strategy that I've deployed is benching the day before or benching on the day last day of the competition so it's yeah, it's, it's a mind game as well as a, a strategic game right so always make sure that you've got your screenshot one two three four uh, CPZ tabs and to done. Carl uh, Pinar, good evening, sir. How are you? Right, so the next thing we're going to have a look at is HWW Prime, and there is a thread online where a, a discussion has been raised about the the best operating system and the best. Java runtime. So I suggest you go and have a look at that. But in a nutshell, the the latest, or not the latest, but one of the latest versions of the uh, development versions is definitely giving a boost over the previous versions and the latest versions. So there again, keeping up to date with sort of like the runtimes that are released from a, a third-party vendor, sort of like like Java is also a good idea. And like before, when I said having multiple versions of the operating system is a good idea, having each version of the runtime that the benchmark is dependent on is also a good idea. And each time something new comes out, guess what? You've got to retest the stuff, and you've got to find that example. Sometimes you're lucky enough, and people will, will post information for you, removing the need to do the homework yourself. But nine times out of ten, you're having to do the homework yourself. And a, a competitive edge is exactly what you're looking for 90% of the time. You've got to find that one thing that everybody else didn't think about that gives you a little boost above everybody else. And it's those things that, that, I strive, that I, I'm always looking for and that uh, will give you the edge. All right, so HWB Prime is really straightforward. Uh, it's, a, it's a Java encrypted uh, written program. To run it as far as I know, the best way to do it is just with the stock settings. There is a 
GUI for it where you can do some configuration on the number of threads and stuff running. I've always found that's given me a worse score than just sort of running the stock standard, you know, interface that it comes with. But I will not claim to be any sort of guru as far as HWBot Prime is concerned. So our targets are, if I'm not mistaken, um, UF Disciple from South Africa who's got a score of 7,174, so we are currently at 6,600, and let's have a look at what he did to, to get that score. Right, so using the 6,700K, and using a 5 gigahertz processor, and 3466 memory. This looks like it is the gear that he won at the HWBOT World Tour in Cape Town, South Africa. All right, so the first thing we're gonna do is we notice that, that HWBOT Prime is quite a quick benchmark to run. It is not very heavy on the CPU, yet it does use all the cores. So the first thing we're gonna try and do is just up the base clock and up the, the, the megahertz. And I do have four minute drive installed and uh, that was broken and that was also broken I think this operating system is broken um, I can't remember which buttons it is uh, let's try and see do I have another operating system this one this drive must be formatted I must just mark it Good evening, George. How are you doing? Thanks for stopping by. You're quite correct, yeah. So, at that stage, it would have been advisable just to to drop down in CPU frequency just to get a score in. But the blue screen was definitely around memory management, and I was actually just trying too hard to... Um, get that 3466 with those very stupid tight timings and whereas what I should have done straight from the beginning is actually run with looser timings and then tightened up as I progressed. I did it sort of backwards but this is just to get the, the, the gist of it right. Yeah. This OS is also no good. Okay, I think let's go to let's go to one of these OSs. It should be fine. So again, I, I do apologise for this because what happened was is my uh, everything all the preparation work I did for the stream was done on the impact. And unfortunately, uh, I think I over tightened or I had over tightened the pot or I over tightened the the cooler. I, I did something and I've accidentally got like a, a whole range of pins that are that are bent or that are depressed. I've got to sit and figure, work that out, but it's going to take some time. I didn't have enough time to to correct it before. It's just time to go live. Okay, so here's my. A short drive that's marked HW by Prime. Let's just see if that one runs on the ASRock.
Okay, so we got HW Prime here. And we don't have any of the tools here, but that's fine. I can install that quickly. Okay, and we're a bit slower than the other board, the other operating system. Okay, so first thing we need to do is go and just install the OC formula, formula drive. Okay, and then the settings, I don't think I'm going to install drivers, we don't need them. What I do want to do is just change the, the resolution if you don't mind. Okay, so the score was about 100 points behind and Let's have a look at what version of JRE we've got installed here. And if we have a look at So it looks like we want to have version 107 installed, and we've currently got version 7, Java 9. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to install that version. I'm not too sure for the right one. Let's just install the right one. Alright, so let's go ahead and install that, and then we can get some scores on the board. So, if there are any more type of streams similar to this type of um, theme you'd like us to run in the future, please do drop us a line and let us know. I think uh, for most upcoming things, we'll just go through the basics. I think it's quite a nice idea. Okay, and while that's installing, let's just go ahead and make sure that we do have this working. Okay, so that's all working. And let's see if this works. I think we might need to restart. <laughs> 
2082 is Windows Tweak? No, unfortunately not. I think it's just a. Um, I think it's just a bias problem that the time and date was never set, um, or it's in the wrong format. There's definitely no tweak that I know of. I see. Broken Java now. Okay, let's hope this works now. I do apologize, I hate having these silly things happen on the stream, but it's one of those things. How did I break Java now? That didn't work, did it? Um, okay, well, this GPU part. I wonder if it isn't. Um, I have a clock that's unstable. Terrible stream. Terrible thing to happen on the stream, that's for sure.
using the wrong version of Java. Okay, nonetheless, let's just get some scores done. That's why it wasn't running before. I uninstalled the version 7 of the Java. Okay, let's just see it. We're 100 points behind. Okay, well, let's go ahead and do what I like to do first, and that's brute force it. So by brute forcing it, I mean pumping up the clocks and and just trying to just force the score out of the, the CPU. But I've got a sneaky suspicion without the right version of JRE, I'm not going to come close. So a reminder, our target was 7,100. And that was against uh, UF Disciple at 7,100. So we're almost there. Let's try pumping that up. And let's take that up. I need to spend some time. You spend some time in tweaking my operating systems for SWF Prime. Definitely looks like I've got some Jira E running issues there. Okay, so what I want to do is I want to go up and try and push that DRAM a little bit further because XDU is I think a lot tougher on memory than uh, than SWF Prime as far as I understand it. So we'll just hit that uh, 3866 and see if it trains first of all and then see if it runs. Okay so it doesn't look like it's training at that megahertz and those clockings and that so we'll go and change it down a bit. Okay, so that didn't train. So let's go and I want to go back to let's go back to there and let's try 1.8. So, George, to to answer your question or to answer to give an explanation to your statement about these competitions being foreign. So the idea behind the Ricky Rumble is to give the guys entering or, or, or just joining HWBot a platform to sort of get familiar with, with competition formats and on how to take part and you know the, the fun that can be had with overclocking. So the Rookie Rumble is only open to those guys that have been a member of HWBot for less than six months or three months or something to that effect. And the reason why I'm taking part in the Rookie Rumble tonight is really just to give the rookies a a foundation or some sort of reference to you know what what can be done and also some quick tweaks and some quick um yeah just little hints and uh, tips on on what to do and how to to build your score um and that's the whole reason behind this sort of stream uh, screen stream uh okay so I'm um, watching the chat again, not watching the the stream. Sorry, guys. And that's the idea behind the Ricky Rumble, in a nutshell.
Now, HW of Prime, I'm sure I can actually go down to Simple Channel. Let's just see if this doesn't train. Which I don't think it did. Uh, I think you can go down to Single Channel. And let's just try this now. And set the memory clock as low as possible. And just try and get as much out of the CPU as possible. Let me see if I can remember this. It might be different now, but um, I remember back in the old Pentium days, we, well, not Pentium days, but um, the anniversary edition, we could get away with doing that. Let's do a quick test. I definitely think on HWF Prime CPU core is more important than anything else. But dual core might make, I mean, dual, uh, dual uh, channel memory. So we should be around 6.6, six, um, if I remember correctly. Okay, so it's about the same. So now... Now let's see what we can do here. It is a little bit slower. Let's see. Okay, so that's basically where we were in dual channel. I think I need to go back to dual channel. So what was our target again? Six, seven, uh, seven, one, seven, four. We're far away. Far away. Okay, so that means I really got to sort out that JRE. Okay, so let's put the memory back into dual channel. Um, I wonder if we shouldn't mimic what UFC UF Disciple is running. He's running EDA. 
No, let's stick to our Kingston retails. For now. Okay, so there is a command line for HW Prime. Okay, so I'm and that's what I've got to run. This is using build 17051B13. Never done this before. Um, I'm sure it must be possible to do it like this. There are E9, and then go to CSBIN, uh, LS, oh no, no, PR, sorry. Um, Oh 
I need to Google it maybe. Uh, Java. What else could it be, I wonder? Yeah, let's Google it. Okay, hold on. Um, okay, let's just take this. Copy that. Small improvement, but not much, and not what I expected. Oh, it's still interesting. Still good info. I didn't know how to do that before. Uh, I don't know if it actually did work or if it didn't work, but. Haha. Who cares? Okay, so let's have a look at my notes as to what I do know about HWBot Prime. And what I know about HWBot Prime is the version of JRE must be right. If Windows 10 is good, but mostly the version of JRE. Now I'm not convinced that I'm using the right version of JRE still. Because if I go and uninstall the other version, I think it's going to stop working again. So let's just try that. So this is where we were last time, and uh, it doesn't work. So let's try that CMD again.
Ah, you know what? I might not have done. I might not have installed it as administrator. Could be an issue. Let's try restarting. Um, Looks like JRE is not running. Okay, so I think, I think, I think, I think I might know what it is, but I don't think I have the time now to sort it out. Let's test the theory and install this one. I didn't install as administrator again. That's the other thing. Stupid benchmarks. Okay, so it wasn't 32 bit. Uh, let's go ahead and try running as administrator. It's a pity I'm struggling with this because it's such a big part of this uh, benchmark is the right version of JRE. I really don't know why I'm struggling so much tonight. I think it must be a little bit of a lack of sleep issues. Maybe.
Okay, well, you know, let's go ahead and have a look at GPU power. Uh, high precision event time and measurement not found. Okay, so we need to enable that in the BIOS, but I don't. This bias our E uh, one point eight. Hmm, okay. Maybe Java is not enabled. Uh, let's just have a look here. CPU, half proficient timer. I don't see the option in this bias to set the H the half reservation event time on and off. I don't know what that reliability stress restrictor is. Maybe that is it. I don't know what AS Rock Paul half precision event time. Very frustrating using it for not my first choice, I'll be honest with you. But the way to get around that is just to run Windows 7. Even that doesn't open. Okay, one last time.
no way to enable or disable the hub provision event event timer here. Okay, so let's go and just switch OS's. I'm not going to come right with Java, not in the amount of time we've got left for the stream. Which means I'm not going to be able to be competitive, but I think let's just put up a score anyway. And uh, let's have a look at where we are on the score. Yeah, it's not going to be very pretty, but it's going to be something. Um, Say it's benchmark. Save. Uh, another important tip, when you hit the, the save button, just move it off to the side. And the reason for that is because sometimes what will happen is when you hit the save, it will um, not move it off and you won't actually get to see your score. And unfortunately that will invalidate your submission because you have to be able to see the score. Um, window. So we're just going to save this now as 6770 and save and then you take the screenshot and then let's just copy the screenshot while we add it because we're going to change operating systems now so we can run GPU farm. I'm going to go and throw the tile in and uh, go and do my reading up as to why Cron gets uh, the right Java to run. And uh, you're still around, empty head. Been a bit quiet this evening. Okay. So we just had a comment on the chat from empty head seventy three. And he basically confirms what I'm saying about the uh, HWB prompt does not care too much about memory speed and timing. And he made another comment saying that usually a lower mem divider is better. So I am always keen to try new tips, new tweaks. And uh, to do that, so we're just going to set the memory back to default and give it a try.
Scores about the same. The difference comes in now. Um, we might be able to get. Uh, we might be able to push it a little bit further. So what I do know is that this benchmark is quite sticky to find like a sweet spot. So similar to like um, W Prime 32M, you got to find a sweet spot with your your setting, your voltages. I'm not very familiar with the benchmark on air at all, and I'm not very familiar with the benchmark on LN2 either. It's one of the weak spots I've identified that I really need to, to focus on before the end of the year. Okay, so... I'm going to just go back and set this. And I'll tell you the reason why. It's because we're going to change the SSD. And hit up for Windows 7. And hopefully one of them works for the ASRock. Gary. I really must apologize again for not having all these operating systems ready. I was not expecting to use this board. Um, I was supposed to be using the, the impact today. Of course, now none of these things are actually ready with the, the correct drivers or anything like that. It's a real mess around. Okay, so let's get on to GPU Pi. Now, quite a shocking revelation I had today when I was going back into my notes for each benchmark that I keep. And I have not started a page for GPU Pi yet, which means I have not actually spent any considerable amount of time with this benchmark. What I do know is that there are a few important steps that need to be taken and there are some configurations and ways to um, to to get some scores, some gains out of it. So 
first thing we're going to need to do is go ahead and just install GPU Power and see if it just runs. Uh, okay, so it's not there, it must be here. Okay, GPU Power. So I should already have it here. Okay, so you've got a 64 bit and obviously a 32 bit version of it. And I should imagine that the 64-bit version is the is the way to go. So GPU power basically relies on calculating um, instances of power using your processor or your video card. So here is Dr. Weezer's pro tip number one with GPU power is that there are some run times that you need to install in order to have the right um, libraries on the PC that enables you to use the right command set to calculate. So the first one is your open open CL, okay, which I already have installed. And then here is the real pro tip is that you actually need to have the AMD one installed, even if you're not running the AMD processor, install it. And then what you need to do is you need to test to see what is the best um, SDK to use or what is the best runtime to use. And then also, if when once we have a look at GPU Pi, you'll see that there are some configuration options, also selection options, some batch sizes. So the next thing you need to work out and you need to actually test is to say, right, well, what is the best batch size to use? So we will go ahead and select the AMD acceleration. And we say, right, well, we want to use 2 million batch sizes and we want to reduce it by 256 each t each loop. Okay, and then that will go and, well, crash first of all. Um, but that will then, these different options here will basically um, determine the sort of the calculations and the steps and all that, and it can have an effect on performance. Okay, so if I'm not even running that, then I'm either not stable or I need to restart. Okay, I need to restart for those run times. So this is a trick that comes in with GPU Pi now, is for your setup is to find the right little sweet spot. Now, for GPU Pi, what am I going up against in the Rookie Rumble? Well, for 100M, which is what we ran, we're going up 11, against 11 seconds. 11 seconds, 15 seconds being the second place. So if we go up against the 15 seconds, which I think is also on a Intel processor, no, that's also on an AMD, that's on a Core R758 20 at 11 seconds. And if we go and have a look at what he was running, and you can actually bring it up, and you can have a look to see what, what sort of uh, batch size he was using. So he was using batch size 20M and the reduction size of 64, and he got 11 seconds. So if I do the same for the batch size of 20M and a reduction of 64, we previously got 16.81. And let's see where we go now. Okay, and we got 16.71. So you can see we shaved off basically 100 milliseconds just by changing those batch sizes. So there's definitely some some space for for movement there. So I need to install Turbo V, uh, not Turbo V, um, the ASRock, stupid ASRock, what's it called? Um, Formula Drive, that's it. So we need to shave six seconds. So a lot to shave. Uh, this poor rookie didn't save the quick screenshot, so 
this floor is probably going to get removed. It's very important just to make sure that you save the screenshot with all the details. He is missing the memory tab. Okay, so let's have a look see. Um, so what we're going to try first of all is we're going to try my normal method which is brute force and then from brute force we then start tuning. And the reboot sometime would be good as well. Uh, because what we did is we installed those AMD drivers. Okay, 1642, shape 300 there. Try 5 gig, calculate. So we were chasing the second place, which was 15.11. So we are a full second away from matching that guy's score. And that's quite an aggressive score with that AMD processor. I'm going to have to really work hard to try and catch that, I think. Number of cores, I think, is defeating me. So the first person that is, uh, yeah. Hello. Okay, we still got audio, but my headset has warned me that I need to recharge. So the audio might drop away, and then you'll see me shuffle. Okay. So what I was saying is that our first person that was also using a 6700K is not. Neo Titan Computing from America with 15600 and just having a look at what settings he used uh, just delete that so he was running a processor we can't see the speed of it his memory was basically at 3200 I think the processor was pretty much a stock and he used a batch size of 10M and a reduction size of 32. So, very straight away, is you go and say, right, well, he was using that reduction 32, and you go and check to see if you can match the settings. Okay, so through 17, 13. Okay, so 16 flat. So there's some room to wiggle. I really should be quicker. I think I need to just... Uh, I need to restart quickly. Okay, so the other trick as well is by changing the batch sizes, you can also find stability where you weren't stable before. Um, now I've frozen there, so blue screen 101, which is a memory, and I think that is actually the cache that is giving that error. But that, I think, is that in a nutshell. I'm going to, I think, in the stream and uh, I'll post the scores up a little later I'm going to try and push just for a little bit more uh, GP power uh, the problem is my headset's about to die and there 
removing HW book from and valid screenshot score. Yeah. Okay, so let's go ahead and just try that now. Yeah, it's not working tonight. Okay, so That's an example for you of exactly what I was saying, that what might work for some batch doesn't work for another batch. And you've really got to, you've got to go through and do your homework and find the right little setting for, for your configuration. Try reducing it, try increasing it, try smaller batch sizes, try larger reduction sizes, and uh, see where you get the sweet spot. After a fifteen fifteen six, so we are second away. Uh, yeah. Not having a good night. With uh quick benches. Okay, so with that reduction size changing, we've actually got a little slower there. So what we'll do now is we'll try 100 mil, we'll try 5.2. Okay. Alright, well, I hope this has been at least a little bit informative and uh, I've at least helped to get you guys started in the right direction. I definitely think I'm going to have to revisit HWF Prime for all of you and revisit GPU Power. Uh, the gists of it are there, um, but by no means has, has I think I got flustered by the, the HW by Prime, and uh, as uh, as um, MD Head 73 has said, you know, you just need to rerun, 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 and until you hit that sweet one. Um, so maybe we'll come back and we'll focus on that another time. training that before. I'm actually just going to try and run the tighter memory again with uh, some more voltage. But I think that's that's going to wrap it up. And uh, yeah, thanks for tuning in. We'd love to hear from you. Please drop us a message on the Facebook profile. And uh, yeah, let us know what you think. I hope this has been some sort of help. Until next time, um, yeah, happy benching. Cheers.